Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to Life Apollo's home of the most trusted beard and automotive news. Happy to have you here. Now, I did take yesterday off uh, a much needed break after like seven or eight days in a row, trying to bring you guys the best possible hypercar news after Daily Driven Exotics and Stradman got their hypercars, along with some other crazy hypercar news on the way. Uh, and I'm probably going to be taking off tomorrow, too. But in between, there was some kind of fun stuff that I wanted to cover because it highlights some of our favorite automotive channels, Stradman, Savage Garage, and many other others and I just wanted to talk about some pretty amazing moments that occurred over the last 24 hours. And as always guys make sure to subscribe to the channel help the beard army grow stronger every subscription helps uh, well my beard get bigger I suppose. And with that guys saddle up boys let's go. All right, first up today, guys, is actually gonna be Savage Garage. Now, we've talked about Savage Garage a bunch of times over the last, like, yeah, one and a half years or so. They really gained prominence extraordinarily quickly uh, with their crazy antics, their exceedingly expensive uh, super and hypercar purchases, the big rallies they've done, along with doing a lot of really big collaborations, Street Speed 717, Shmi, all, all those sorts of people. And I would say one of the bigger elements of them sort of gaining crazy prominence here uh, has been some of their recent hypercar purchases. First the Koenigsegg CCX, then the Pagani Huayra, and now, you know, we, we've made some speculation pieces in the last week or so about them maybe buying a brand new Bugatti there, and I say brand new, you know what I mean. But there's so many hypercars coming to their channel, and it seems like they're not done in that area yet. But before we get into their new hypercar video, I want to talk about a very special Instagram post that I saw Savage Garage put up over the last 24 hours. So if you go over to their Instagram account, you see a beautiful picture of the RS6 Avant with the caption below. That's actually a pretty big deal. This is an amazing announcement for me. I have been a huge RS6 Avant fan and had an order in for one. This is the RS6 Special Edition. There are only 25 being made and I just got word that I have the first serial number and first US one ever. It's at Customs now and will be here for Savage Rally. I am beyond thankful to Rockville Audi for making this happen. So talk about how incredible that is, guys. Uh, to get the very first edition of that car coming into the US, that's a very, very big deal. Uh, there's been a lot of hype behind the RS6 Avant uh, making its way to the US after a long absence of that particular kind of car over in the United States. This is going to be a pretty big deal for their channel moving forward. Uh, and that, that by itself would have been a fantastic story to sort of talk about a little bit today. Uh, give Randy a big congratulations. But there seems to be something even bigger on the horizon, even more so potentially than the Bugatti video that we did on them potentially getting a, a Veyron here in the next couple of weeks, days. We're not even sure. One of their latest videos on the Savage Grove Garage Clips channel had a couple of interesting moments that makes it look like it's possible Randy might be buying a La Ferrari to add to the Pagani and the Koenigsegg and the Bugatti. I gotta say it's a little bit difficult to say. He does have a couple issues with the La Ferrari. He says the interior looks very similar to his old 458 and that you can get some other cars for the crazy price tag attached to a La Ferrari. He does specifically talk about the fact that getting a La Ferrari could eventually be a pretty great investment as he thinks they're gonna go up in value over the next you know, five to 10 years. A lot of people weighing in in the comment section below. Uh, and really this is just sort of indicative of, of what Randy's channel is. Like as he decided to get into automotive YouTube, he already had a, a bunch of great cars, but he really only started adding hyper cars, uh, you know, like a year or so into his channel's progress. And I think it's a, a very, very big deal to have another person like Manny Koshman, uh, who has incredible hyper cars, like Randy giving incredible access to the hyper cars to all of their fans. It's something that not many channels can do do, and obviously it helps to be pretty successful before you come to YouTube first. So do yourself a favor, guys. Go over to the Savage Garage Clips channel and weigh in on, on whether or not you think he should buy a La Ferrari to add to his already insane super and hyper car fleet. And obviously leave a comment down below because I'd love to be able to chat with you guys about this particular hyper car decision for Randy and the Savage Garage channel going forward. So put your choices in the comment section below on this video. Next up, guys, Daily Driven Exotics, uh, another really big big potential decision coming down the pipe here uh, and it has to do with Dave this time not Damon. As you guys know uh, Daily Driven Exotics as a team just made their biggest purchase in channel history a 1.7 million dollar McLaren P1 hypercar. Threw it out of nowhere just a couple days before Stradman revealed his Bugatti Veyron and you would think after shopping for the new tire slayer potentially getting a rear wheel drive Evo that they would essentially stop with the new car purchases uh, at least for some time. That's, that's a lot of cash going towards super and hypercar 
cars all in a very short amount of time. Uh, it seems like that might not be the case. If we take a look at Dave's Instagram account, uh, he shows a picture of his old McLaren MP412C with the comment section below saying, I genuinely miss this car, but I'm very happy for its new owner. When the border opens, we'll head out to Washington to film a vlog with its new owner. It's pretty cool to see the similarities between the 12C and the P1. Center stack and the media interface are almost mirrored. The P1 even has the same displacement in its twin turbo V8. I'd love to pick up a 600 LT and do more track days. The 12C was incredibly fun to track. Obviously the 600 LT, uh, incredible track car, even better than like the 675 LT because of the newer technology that was available when they made the 600 LT. Obviously there's a lot of great similarities between the 600 LT uh, and his old McLaren MP4 12C. Top mounted exhaust, extraordinarily fast. Uh, a lot of really fun things there. And I can see why he wants a McLaren sort of back in his grouping. I'm sure he misses the McLaren MP4 12C. So the question for you guys is, would you like to see a 600 LT on the Daily Driven Exotics channel? Obviously they already have the P1, obviously they already have a 720S, and now potentially looking at a 600 LT too. I think it's very funny because for the longest time, I feel like they were never gonna get a McLaren because there was some sort of question mark about reliability over long periods of time. The Huracan platform was such a, a reliable uh, car to have for so many years on their channel. And I think that the McLarens had a lot of question marks and it seems like all of a sudden we might have three different McLarens on the Daily Driven Exotics channel. So put it in the comments below guys, 600 LT, yes or no for Dave, let me know. And last guys, yes, we're talking about Stradman getting mobbed at his first official public appearance uh, with the Bugatti Veyron, the hypercar that was so incredibly important for his channel uh, after a number of months searching. And this is really cool guys. So he put up a post a day ago saying the Bugatti will be at the Agility Customs Cars and Coffee tomorrow. Might be the last public appearance until next spring and summer. That's a pretty long period of time where no one else is really going to be able to see this Bugatti Veyron. Obviously we're getting sort of to the end of summer, into fall at this kind of point. Uh, and I, I doubt he's going to be driving that Bugatti much during the winter. You never know. We might have a snowplow Bugatti video. Can you imagine how viral that would go? I'm not sure it would go viral enough to cover the issues that it might have to go through afterward. Uh, but when Stradman took the Bugatti Veyron, along with Burlacker, by the way, uh, we got a bunch of incredible videos showing just how popular uh, James is when he goes to a public event, especially after buying his hypercar. So my favorite shot was this drone footage, guys. Look at this drone footage right now. Just incredible. Uh, you can see it over top. Just a mass, at least over 100 people plus, just crowding around the Bugatti Veyron. We got Burlacker's point of view afterward. Take Look at that. James, you're getting mobbed. Hello. You're getting mobbed. <laughs> Everybody's here to see you, let's be no, honest. No, it's the car, the let's star. be honest. It's the car. <laughs> this is so crazy. Well. And then someone actually put a montage together uh, of just some really great shots of the Veyron sort of moving through the crowd and sort of the chaos that ensued. And obviously this is a very friendly mobbing, guys. Obviously mob can be either violent or big in admiration. And it's kind of a fun thing to be able to see uh, someone that, you know, a number of years ago was essentially homeless, living in his car to the point where he has a hypercar and is essentially a monster celebrity in Utah. Think about how incredible that is that he can go to an event like that and instantly become the, the center of attention for the entire event and it really never lets up. I would imagine that the entirety of the time that he was there, he was continually mobbed by people, so was his car. But I think it's generally a very cool thing for people, uh, you know, like Stradman to take his car out and share it with the public. You know, a lot of his vlogs take place at his house or sort of in relatively secluded areas. You don't often see him, at least on camera, doing big crowd events like it. And I hope we get a vlog from his perspective. I think that would be really, really cool. Obviously just sort of a wish on my part because I think it'd be really awesome to see. And obviously if you have great footage, feel free to send it to me. Uh, DM it to me on Instagram. I think it'd be a cool thing to be able to follow uh, sort of continually going forward. Anyway, guys, had to share it with you because I imagine that any sort of public car event he goes to, this is what's gonna happen from now on and probably has been happening for years at this point. Go check out some of the links that we had, guys. Uh, very, very cool footage. Next up, guys, uh, Shmi is on a hypercar cruise. Two fantastic videos in a row. One of the craziest hypercar videos he's ever put out, including his Senna, uh, 15 Koenigseggs. You cannot ask for more in terms of hypercar content than what Shmi just put up over the last two or three days, go check it out. It's just bafflingly incredible to see. And I imagine will be uh, sort of footage that will show up on the internet for many, many, many years to come. Oh, by the way, guys, make sure to go check out Burlacker's latest video, uh, do, doing some mods to his Raptor, a lot of sort of common sense mods, some stuff that I did in mine as well. A great video from him. I love it when he can put out vlogs. One of my favorite automotive channels right up there with Stradman. Then we got CarWow, guys, with a great matchup between the M4, the RS5, and the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. I think I said all that 
right? Carwow, uh, obviously, as we talked about a couple days ago, 75 million views a month, eclipsing every other automotive channel in one month ever. A truly astounding uh, accomplishment for Matt Watson and his team. Go check out his video today to see exactly why they blew up so much. Drag Times, guys, has a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ versus a Lamborghini Huracan Evo. Really interesting race, uh, sort of the pinnacles of both versions of Lamborghinis. But I gotta tell you, after watching the, the video very carefully, it kind of was a little bit nerve-wracking because the SV appeared to be swerving a bunch during their big pulls together. Uh, that would have terrified me if I'd been in my McLaren and had somebody sort of swerving in. I'm not saying anything negative about the driver. We don't of the road conditions, but it definitely freaked me out to watch a little bit. Go check out Drag Time's video if you want to see what that was all about. Next up, guys, an incredible video from Seen Through Glass uh, detailing the Aston Martin Victor 836 horsepower manual V12, uh, based partially off of the Aston Martin 177. Uh, just an incredible video, a uh, very unique car, and has, has a lot of very differing opinions about the particular car. But go check it out, guys. Seen Through Glass, Sam, awesome, awesome host for his channel, and one of the I don't know how to put this, like one of the nicest guys on automotive YouTube, like one of the most prestigious, we'll put that way. Uh, go check out his channel, guys. It's a very interesting car. Sam does a great video overall. Skimming through the rest of the news, guys, we got TJ Hunt uh, almost done with the Wrecked R8 rebuild. It's looking, uh, well, phenomenal at this point. If you've been enjoying that series, make sure to go check out TJ Hunt's channel. I think you'll really enjoy it. And obviously, he could probably use some of the, the happiness of people going and watching his videos. They're dealing with some pretty tough stuff with Sabrina right now. So go check it out. Leave him a, a kind word and make sure to comment on how awesome his R8 looks. And the last two today, guys, more Doug DeMuro, Doug DeMuro's secondary channel, did an entire sort of uh, review on the new Jeep Wagoneer, a 30 year absence from the market. I guess some very interesting takes on it. I just like hearing Doug talk about cars in general. It doesn't really matter what car he's talking about for the most part. I just generally enjoy that channel. And more Doug DeMuro has a lot more commentary than his initial Doug DeMuro channel that has mostly reviews. And then Engineer and Explain goes on, on a really, really fantastic video uh, talking about why the Tesla has such incredible range compared to pretty much every other competitor in in the space. One of the better videos he's put out over the last couple months for sure. And folks, that's about all I've got for you guys today. Probably taking tomorrow off. I've got family in town I haven't seen for a couple years, uh, but everyone's sort of taking a nap right now. So I've got a couple hours to put together a video and, and get it to you guys and hopefully get it edited in time for today. So thank you guys so much. Thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, I got some great stuff coming up, guys. Uh, things got pushed back a little bit because of some weird COVID stuff, but we're pushing forward. Uh, Raptor build V12 still coming, just took a little bit longer than I initially wanted to. It's kind of rough. If you talk about things and you want to get it pumped up, but at the same time, you know, if something goes wrong, like I talked about in so many different videos, it can be kind of annoying for the audience. So I do apologize about that, guys. Anyway, have a fantastic day. Make sure to stay safe, sane, and healthy. I'm out of breath. Bye.